they are just shared with another video on easy math. Today we are going to learn about rules of finding domain. In previous video we have learned about graphical representation of functions and domain, codomain and range of graphical representation. If you haven't checked that video, go check it out in the top right corner of the video. Okay, now rules of finding domain. The first rule the first rule tells us that expressions under even roots have domain of positive x values okay now let's take an example now let's take y is equal to square root of x okay this is the fun this is the graph of root x or x power 1 by 2 as you can see this this function starts at 0 and goes on until infinity goes on until infinity so the domain of this function is denoted as the bracket are denoted as the right side bracket 0 comma infinite and the left side bracket or opening bracket okay now let's take another another equation of even root x power fourth root of x or x power 1 by 4 x power 1 by 4 as you can see as you can see this is the graph of x is e x power 1 by 4 as you can see this this graph also starts at 0 and extends to infinity so codomain of this is the values between 0 comma infinite or infinity okay now let's go to our second rule the second rule tells us that the denominator should not be zero as you all know if denominator is zero it becomes a function of one by zero becomes of form one by zero what is the value of one by zero it's infinity so the graph exists at infinity so we can't view infinity so it is impossible for us to view that so for finding domain the denominator should not have zero okay now last two rules denote as of two functions and the sum product and division of those functions okay for that let's take functions now let's take functions sine inverse x okay this is a this is one function and let's take another function as x power 1 by 2 as you can see this is the graph of x power 1 by 2 the green color one and this is the graph of sine inverse x the red color one okay now now let's take the third rule the third rule tells us that the sum or the sum or product of two functions the domain of sum or product of two functions is the is the intersection of the domains of two functions okay now let's see f of x plus g of x f of x plus g of x as you can see this is the function f of x plus g of x or sine inverse x plus square root of x now as you can see the the domain of sine inverse x the domain of sine inverse x is minus 1 comma 1 values between minus 1 comma 1 the domain of 
square root of x is 0 is the values between 0 and infinite. Now the resultant function f of x plus g of x have the domain of intersection of these two means minus 1 to 1 intersect 0 to infinity which is nothing but 0 to 1. So the resultant function have domain of 0 comma 1 values between 0 comma 1. Okay, now let's take f of x into g of x. f of x, f of x into g of x. As you can see, this, this is the curve of f of x into g of x or sine inverse x into x square. As you can see, this, this also varies from 0 to 1. Okay, the third rule is this, the sum or product of two, the sum or product of two functions domain is the intersect of domains of two functions or f of x and g of x. Okay, now let's go to the fourth rule. The fourth rule tells us that the division of the division of two functions domain is the intersect of the intersect of domain of first function and the domain of second function minus the set of values where the g of x is zero. In our case, in our case, square root of x is g of x. The the set of values where the g of x is 0, which is nothing but 0. So, now let's take f of x by g of x. f of x by g of x. This is the function f of x by g of x. As you can see, this function lies from 0 to 1 and this is not derivable at 0 as the value of g of x is 0 at 0. Okay. But now if we take off the axis, now you may ask, it is touching at 0. How can we tell that it is not touching at 0? This is because a point is an infinitely small value. Exact point is an infinitely small value. So, at that point, it does not exist, as we all know. Okay, this is for today's video. If you like the video, like and subscribe for this channel for more awesome videos. If you have any doubts in mathematics, comment down below. I will answer them in next video. Okay, bye. See you later.